Hey everybody and welcome back to another F1 Roundup brought to you by the Seedstream Formula One app. Uh, in this week's video we will of course talk about everything Monaco related. I'll share some of my experiences of having been at the event this weekend with the BBC in commentary role. Um, plus some of the stories and rumours that I learnt about whilst talking to people during the weekend. Uh, Seedstream is an app that I, together with a couple of friends, founded and have been developing over the last couple of years to the point where I believe it's genuinely now every F1 fan's best companion. It is the app that I open first every single morning because it brings all of my news stories, my articles, it gives me short article summaries if I haven't got time to read the whole thing, it puts videos and social media feeds all centred around particular breaking news stories in one place. It's intuitive to use after a recent update, I think you'll really enjoy it. Plus it's got other features like our predictions game, which by the way is getting intense. Lots of people getting all five right in Monaco with maximum points, not too late to take part. So go download the app, it's absolutely free. There'll be a link in the description of this video or just search Seedstream in any of your app providers. Okay, the Monaco Grand Prix. It's one of those that splits opinion, isn't it? Um, I was there, as I said, it, as an event to be part of and to be there, it is one of the best. It's so special, it's unique. I've been lucky enough, to obviously, to take part in it as a competitor with the team on many, many occasions. I've also been super lucky to be there on the winning team on about three times, I think, I've won it with McLaren, with various drivers. Um, that's very, very special. The whole atmosphere is incredible. The scenery, of course, everything around it is particularly amazing and special. However, if you're not there, which of course is by far the majority of people, it can be pretty dull. And this weekend's race, I think really epitomized that, didn't it? It was a tough one to commentate on to some extent because the cars were running around at such slow speeds to protect their tires that it wasn't even a race at all, really. It was a, it was a procession, perhaps even more so than we've seen in recent times because they had that first lap incident where everyone changed tires. So there wasn't even any real strategic play in terms of pit stops um, at hand here. So a difficult one from a viewing perspective. Those of you watching from home, I'm sure you found it very, very frustrating. The drivers did too. And of course, that perennial question that comes up every Monday after the Monaco Grand Prix, all of the headlines, it's been the same in the Seedstream app this week. Should Monaco have a place on the Formula One calendar? <laughs> I absolutely believe that it should. Um, I think it should because it has a level of importance. And I also think that with 24 races on the calendar, it could even increase as the years roll on. I also want to see a variety of different types of events. I don't just want the same kind of circuit or the same kind of event at every single round. I want to see a nice mixture. And Monaco gives us something completely different. For Monaco, it's really all about Saturday, isn't it? Qualifying is where we see the cars on their absolute limit. And through the streets of Monte Carlo, that is a spectacle to behold. Commentating on the qualifying session on Saturday was intense. It was brilliant. And it was Charles Leclerc that did the job, of course, and got it done. Translated it into his first win around those streets as well. But to see the cars, particularly coming through that swimming pool section, is just monumental. They are on the limits with the walls very, very close. And I thought, you know, that's amazing. So why not, you know, big up the Saturday even more for the Monaco weekend? Potentially even maybe give points for qualifying or something like that further down the field. I'd also think we could do something with the race. We're in an era of Formula One right now under the stewardship of, of Liberty Media, where we seem much more comfortable experimenting with different things. We're experimenting with sprint race and different sprint race formats. So why not experiment at the Monaco Grand Prix? I've actually seen a few other people say this as well now, but why not mandate two pit stops at that one? Why not mandate using all three types of tyre in the race on Sunday? So that at the very minimum, even though it still will be processional and it doesn't improve the overtaking on track, at least it gives us some strategic play where positions will uh, can be changed and strategy can make a difference. At least it adds something to the spectacle. Unless we modify either the cars or the circuit, it's always going to be a tricky one to turn into uh, an absolute classic. But as I said, it adds other things and I do believe that it has a place in the calendar. There was talk this weekend 
of Formula One considering an idea which might start to alternate Monaco with another racetrack, something like maybe Zandvoort, where they do one one year and they go to the next venue the next year. We've done that in the past, of course, when I was a little kid. My little village where I grew up we used to alternate the British Grand Prix with Silverstone and Brands Hatch. So it can be done. It's been done many times and maybe that's a solution. Let me know your thoughts. Other rumours that were going around the paddock this weekend. Um, actually, there were quite a few rumours around Adrian Newey having signed the deal at Ferrari. Absolutely nothing concrete here. There's nothing official in this regard, but more than one person said to me they had heard uh, with some authority that that deal was potentially now done, maybe even was done over the course of the Monaco weekend when Adrian was in um, uh, in residence at Red Bull this weekend. So perhaps that's one we'll get an announcement on soon. Also that Lewis Hamilton and his team of management may well have been instrumental in getting that deal across the line. Really keen to bring Adrian to the team when Ferrari, uh, when Lewis joins Ferrari next year. Again, keep an eye on it, nothing concrete yet, but that is a big rumour going around. Uh, what else did I learn? I learnt that um, at Williams, we talked about this last week, Williams are very much confident that not next year, but maybe the year after, and certainly beyond that, they are going to be in a position where they can fight way, way further up the field. They have aspirations under Doralton of actually winning championships. Now that's not a throwaway comment, that is their long-term commitment in terms of the investment that's been made. And I'm talking about some major investment that was put into the infrastructure, building up things like the machine shop facilities, the wind tunnel technology. They have advanced tech um, in the background at Williams. And yeah, they're trying now to sort of break and test all of their systems and processes. They're trying to break and push people to the limits to see what passes those tests, which elements of what they have right now in the organisation can continue to move forward and what they need to completely revamp and start again with. That is something that James Vowles has often talked about, this sort of three to five year plan. And having spoken to some people in the know at Williams over the weekend, that is a plan that's very much in action right now. And with a Mercedes power unit for 2026, which everyone, including especially Mercedes, seem to be very, very confident about, Williams have an air of confidence about them with what they can do with that. Um, actually, somebody said to me at Williams at the weekend, of course, they've signed Alex Albon on this long term deal. They said, you will be surprised at some of the caliber of drivers we are talking to for that second seat. So keep an eye on that one, too. Could be a big name or two potentially popping up at Williams over the next few weeks and months. I'm pretty sure Logan Sargent is on his way out. I think that's a given. Could be a big name coming in. Um, what else? Sergio Perez. Sergio Perez's crash at the start of that Grand Prix. We should talk about that. It's obviously disastrous for Checo. Um, I don't think it was necessarily his fault and certainly I don't think it was his fault at all. But the fact that he was all that way down in qualifying and that far down in the on the grid, he has to take responsibility for. Um, that. When you put yourself in that position, particularly in Monaco, you are asking for trouble. But I thought it was interesting, as Checo also said, that they didn't really even investigate that incident. Now, a skeptic might say, well, Kevin Magnussen was very, very close to getting a race ban and the FIA don't really want that to happen. A driver getting banned from Formula One because of driving standards is not really a good advert for the sport. I'm sure there's a lot of paperwork involved, but it's also quite messy and not really a good look. So it felt something slightly odd about the fact that such a massive incident, and I'm not just talking about the consequences, but I'm talking about the driving standards. And it wasn't that you give a bit of extra leniency for the start of a Grand Prix, because I think at that point it wasn't really the start. Everything had spaced out and I suspect you just have to say that was Kevin Magnussen's fault, or he certainly could have avoided it. Was it worthy of that extra penalty point that would have tipped him over the line? I suspect it might well have been, but at the very least, I'm surprised there wasn't an investigation. We talked about it in our commentary. Checo seemed surprised after the race too. Not sure what's going on there. But Checo definitely has to up his game is the bigger point here. Max Verstappen cannot hold on to that Red Bull team's position at the front of the field on his own. And I say that because there is massive pressure coming from Ferrari and of course from McLaren. Not just in Monaco, we can take those results with a, 
a slight pinch of salt because of the uniqueness of that particular circuit but it's not just about Monaco is it we've seen that pressure coming over the last couple of races and as a result we're seeing Red Bull being pushed to the limit where they are struggling to get the best out of their car they don't have the the luxury of having such a big advantage over everyone else they can afford the odd little misdemeanor and we're seeing Max Verstappen being pushed and even making mistakes that's unusual isn't it if they haven't got two cars in this fight the advantage they have in the constructors championship especially will be very quickly eroded with Ferrari and McLaren really now chasing and both of those teams having two drivers consistently at the front I think Red Bull need to seriously think about upping their game and Checo seriously needing to think about upping his own game to match Max or at least be up there there is a lot of talk about him about to announce a contract extension at Red Bull and I think that was really or is on the cards I think it's it's highly likely to happen I don't see what other real option Red Bull have that might be better than Checo and so perhaps as Andrew Benson said on our coverage over the weekend by default he may well just end up with that seat for at least one more year keep an eye on that one but perhaps the announcement when it comes might just settle his nerves give his confidence a little bit of a boost allow him to focus back on the racing and maybe we'll get the results coming back again but he needs to do something at the moment it is not good enough what else um what else do we talk about oh yeah also Carlos Sainz getting that get out of jail free card at the restart on Sunday interestingly <laughs> Obviously, that was super lucky that having had the puncture with contact with Oscar Piastri, then the red flags came out almost immediately. Uh, and at the restart, he was able to take his position again. Now, some people think that's unfair. Uh, actually, the reality is that the FIA or race control rather have to find, have to have a way of accurately measuring the position of all of those cars at the point where the red flag comes out to be able to establish an order for the restart. Now, typically what you do is when they've all gone through the first timing line you would use that timing line to uh, establish an order and you'd reset the grid in that order now they hadn't all quite gone through that timing line it was a matter of meters short and it was only i think the last car was joe guan yu who hadn't quite crossed that timing line so what they did was they went back to the second safety car line which was the next line official timing line that everybody had been through to re-establish that order so Zhou Guan Yu, I guess being a little bit slow off the line, getting a slow start to that race and having to avoid the accident, uh, was the one that actually because he was so slow and because he didn't make it to that timing line, he was the one that uh, allowed Carlos Sainz the option or the lucky stroke of luck to uh, find his way back up to third place on the new grid for the restart. So I guess he's got the, uh, the Sauber driver to thank for that one. Um, any other rumours what else do we learn Max Verstappen um, the rumours are and again this is no concrete evidence yet but lots of talk around this it feels like it's legit Max Verstappen looking highly likely to stay at Red Bull for 2025 the stuff around Christian Horner is definitely still bubbling away in the background there is a lot of unrest around that there are a lot of other stories and offshoots which <laughs> Some of which I can't talk about at the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> but there's a lot going on in the background regarding that story and Christian Horner. Um, I think Max Verstappen is looking highly likely to stay with the team for 2025. It would make sense. They do have a good car. Um, they have a car that's definitely going to be competitive. And I suspect it will be competitive next year again. But for 2026, the talks are genuine about Max Verstappen moving to Mercedes. These are absolutely concrete conversations which are happening and seeming more and more likely. So in the similar way that we talked about in the past where Lewis Hamilton was convinced by Nicky Lauda, Ross Braun to move to Mercedes ahead of the last big regulation change, it seems that they're very confident in their power unit plans ahead of 2026 and that may be enough to convince Max Verstappen to jump ship and join the Silver Arrows. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, I think that's probably about it. It was a wonderful weekend to be there. Um, as I said, very, very special. Great for me on a personal level to go and catch up with lots of my friends and former colleagues all around the pit lane and paddock. Um, I do get that it's not the best TV spectacle at all. And as I said earlier, from a commentary perspective, it was actually quite tough at times trying to make that race interesting and keep people enthralled over the two hours or so that we were running around at such slow pace so 
I'd love to see your thoughts and comments on what we should do. And don't just say get rid of it. If you think we should get rid of it, you can let me know. But if we weren't going to get rid of it, if it is too important to this sport, how can we somehow spice it up and make it more interesting as a spectacle for those who are not lucky enough to be there? Let me know in the comments. One final thing, you may have noticed from last week's video that I gave you the option to win a copy or a couple of copies of the brand new F124 game on any platform you choose. That option is still available. And if you go on to Twitter or X and find the Seedstream app account, and that's all it's called, at Seedstream app, there'll be a link in this description. All you need to do is find my post in the Seedstream account and retweet it. It's as simple as that. You put yourself in with a shout and on the, uh, the end of May at midnight, we will choose two winners by on at random to receive copies of that brand new game before anybody else. So all you got to do, head over to Twitter, find at Seatstream app, find the post that I did regarding the F124 giveaway and retweet it. Best of luck, everybody. I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this. Do go and download the Seatstream app. I honestly don't think you'll regret it. You can thank me later. It's totally free and I will see you in a week's time or so. Bye-bye.